Okay, more blob tracking demos. Uh, we've got a bunch of uh, example videos here, various challenges. Uh, we'll see if we can get any of these to be able to track uh, well. Let's see what I've got here. So the basic thing is we're going to go from the movie. Typically, we're playing movies here. Mm -hmm. Wake up. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to yawn. No, it's boring. It, it's not boring. It's super great. <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding. I like it. All right, so we've got a bunch of videos. Typically, we'd have a live camera. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead of a live camera, we have all these different situations. We have a parking garage. We have pressing on spandex fabric. We have dancers dancing around from overhead. Yes, we have dancer. lasers on the wall, a bunch of stuff. So we're going to try all these different situations. The basic, in all these cases, what we're going to do is we're going to go from a movie into the through the video processing modules which we just talked about in a different video uh, and then out from there into our blob labeler and then into centroids and then we once the centroids are found we can you know look at all the blobs we can look just the biggest blobs and we can look at just the smallest blob or we can look at you know uh, we can unpack like the top five and typically blobs are labeled in terms of their size mm -hmm. so the biggest blob is going to be blob number one and so on and so forth two three four so, all right, let's start with the easy stuff. Um, let's look at the, oh, we do, well, I mean, in the previous video, we did this overhead thing. Okay, so we had him walking around, and I think the way we did it was, uh, what am I doing here? So grayscale, change, frame differencing, curves, uh, curves into running average, into blurring, into jit op, and then out. Okay, so maybe the curves are not quite, yeah, that's not right. So that needs to be much more contrasty. Let's see, oh gosh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm way too far, all right. Contrast up, brightness up. Oh, you can see, oh, look at that. Wow, that's really already working well. Look at that, mm -hmm. that's a nice blob. That's a nice blob. Nice blob, very good. All right, uh, so that's working. So what, what did we do? We went into RGB to Luma to go into uh, grayscale. Uh, we found just the difference frames, and then from there we go into curves to increase the brightness and contrast, and then into jit.ravg, running average, to smear it out over time. That's going to take some of the flickering noise away because that noise doesn't persist from frame to frame, and it gets sort of disappeared. And we blur the whole image, and then we do a threshold, and then we send the result out. So do you I need to think, adjust the threshold or no? No, I think this is working really well. Uh, and you can see it's tracking him pretty nicely. If we just look at the biggest blob, typically the biggest blob is going to be him. Um, I think we could set the uh, threshold a little higher and then look at that. We get a quite nice... You know, you can see it's kind of lagging from... it's. You can see that it's smeared out. I think mm -hmm. the, the running average is a little... A little strong here. Let's uh, let's make that a little less strong. It'll be more responsive if you have less of a running average filter. And then you can see right here we're tracking pretty well. Um, there's still some issues. Oh, now we're tracking all kinds of blobs. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is an exceptionally difficult thing to do, though. The lighting and the complexity of this scene is, is pretty. Uh, pretty Ratchet. difficult, <laughs> but I feel like if we sat here and worked with it longer, we could get the, we could get this to work pretty well. Definitely. Um, all right, let's Try keep going. Video. Try yeah, different Logitech video. overhead. No, we did that one. Parking garage. All right. Um, this ought to work the same way, pretty much. Let's see. Oops. There we go. So uh, this is looking at motion. This is just up on the parking garage. I'm looking at people walking. And right away, it's already still working, even with the settings from the previous video kind of in there. Um, what would we need to change here? So Potentially the curves? Mm, yeah, maybe. I mean, mm, it's working pretty well. Yeah. I, blur is pretty expensive. I'm just using fast, like four copies of the fast blur. What if we can not use the fast blur? I think we could get a lot more efficiency out of this. I mean, blurring is really... Uh, really useful, but uh, so the lower the number here is more smoothing. Um, all right, let's see what that ends up doing. I don't know. It's tracking pretty well. Yeah. 
All right, I'm going to move on. Um, all right, so this is from behind a piece of spandex stretched across this frame. And I, I, this was from a project I did a while back, and I wanted to use a blob tracking in order to track where people were pressing. So there's this infrared light shining up here, and the idea is that we could tell where people would press on this fabric. Um, this is a kind of a hard one. I'm going to move on here. Let's go to the dancers. So here we have some dancers moving around on a black floor. And um, this is the same sort of thing. We're looking at uh, frame differencing into curves. Let's see, let's really ramp up the contrast here. There we go. No, too much, too much. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, and again, through running average. Not bad. Above a threshold. Okay, so, I mean, this looks blobby. Looks pretty blobby. Uh, we have a lot of running averaging going on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's tracking the main blob here is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, let's see if we can. Yeah, I mean, you can see that at least it's tracking all these people, even though they're moving pretty slowly, it's still able to track them. Uh, and the thing that's hard to get across to students is that <clears throat> all of this takes a, a fair bit of tuning. Once you have your actual footage that you're using, um, you really have to tune the system mm -hmm. based on the lighting in the scene, based on the, the qualities of the camera you're using. Um, you can't just plug it in and expect it to work really well. You really have to fine-tune the parameters of these video processing modules until it works pretty well. And once yeah. it works well, it works really well. But until then, it can seem like it's pointless to even try. But And then um, you need to make sure you make a note of what you, your yeah, values. Yeah, you have to save all your settings <laughs> and hopefully don't bump the camera. No. And especially if you're building an installation, you have to use the actual camera that you're using. Um, all right, let's go to the laser here. Laser. This is my heartbeat. I taped a piece of mirror to my uh, hand. This is an easy one. This should be really easy. Let's start from scratch here. So um, in this case, we don't need to do a whole lot mm -mm. because we have a pretty clean image to begin with. So RGB to Luma, um, we don't even need to use difference frames here. I'm just going to go right into curves. And of course, that is wildly too bright here. So let's see. Oops. All right, so we can just using just brightness and contrast alone, Jeez. we can get pretty right? good, pretty good blob tracking. So I think that's all we have to do actually. Just do curves. You know what? We could <laughs> we don't even we can do simpler than that. Let's just do uh, jitop. Let's do anything that's there. We go. We don't need anything. Just that. Okay. So jitop, um, and then straight out, and we're tracking that dot yeah. really. I mean, and this really speaks to planning well, you know, if you have control of your environment, if you have control over some of these things, is yeah. knowing that or designing things for that, yeah. if that's what you intend to do. Yeah, a lot of the blob tracking is about how you position the camera mm -hmm. and the lighting in the situation. Uh, if you have a terrible input video, it's, it's just, you know, there's, it's hard. Sometimes by shifting a light or shifting the camera position, especially making sure your camera is in manual manual everything mode right. uh, can be really helpful. So, All right, uh, laser me to overhead lights on. We did the, oh, here's an overhead, me walking around. Um, this is a little more complex. Let's see. So um, what do we got? All right, so I'm walking around here on this black floor. Uh, I remember how I did this one before. So let's do this and then did change let's do frame differencing what if i wait what if we did adaptive thresholding does that help us all no 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 i'm sorry it doesn't you're getting crazy now yeah we can go into standard deviation and then reset it and let it let it figure so this is going to do uh adaptive background subtraction by looking at over time how pixels differ uh, from what is normally there. That actually, this is actually a really good um, use case for this particular video. So we can see we're getting already uh, pretty good. So this video here is everything that's 3.5 standard deviations from the mean, uh, which just means these pixels have to be different enough 
from the normal background um, in order to be picked up. I wonder if that would have worked well with the dude walking around in your classroom. It may have, yeah, we should have tried that. But I'm gonna take the background subtracted video and, oh no, I don't wanna do that. Let's go from here into curves and see what happens. That's a pretty good blob. I mean, my shadow is is becomes part of the blob, but maybe that's not a big deal. Um, let's do jet op. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go from curves into blur. I love blur. I wish it wasn't so expensive, but let's do blur. Uh, a little bit of running average, and then um, jet op, and we'll see what we got. What do we got? Oh, come on. Come back in there. All right. Uh, it's sort of blobby. Maybe we shouldn't use the background subtracted. Maybe we should actually use the standard deviation. Okay. Oh, now we're talking. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll send that out and see if that will track. Does it track? Hey, not bad. Um, you know, as a first pass, it sort of works. Let's uh, up the uh, threshold on how big the blob has to be. But the biggest blob here is, that's me. It's tracking me pretty well. My shadow is sort of in the way. Um, but you know, I'm wearing a black shirt. I'm on a black background. Right. We have these bright reflections in the Marley. Um, but you know, it's it sort of works. It's doing okay. It's not tracking too badly, actually. Um, yeah, it's yeah. decent. It's yeah. pretty decent. Okay. Um, so I hope this gets across that you know a lot of the work of doing any kind of tracking application is processing your videos such that you have easy to track blobs. Right. That's it. It's not a big mystery. Mm. Um, it just takes practice. The mystery of blobs. Blob mystery. Okay. <laughs>